Hello games developers and level designers using Unreal Engine. In this occasional series I'm going to look at free assets and how you can use them in your project. And I'm going to start off today with this procedural spline wall system. So let's get to it. For those of you that don't know, Epic Games offer a ton of free content for games developers in their marketplace. Uh, if you go to this free section, there's a permanently free collection with uh, lots and lots of items in there. And they also have this free for the month section where they usually put four or five items. So the uh, asset that I'm going to review today is called Procedural Spline Wall System. It's uh, free for September 2021. By the time this video goes live, you'll probably have about a week left of September to grab it. I don't know what the price is normally, but um, I would say grab it while you can. It seems to offer quite a few things in here. It's got various uh, types of walls, brick, stone, cement, and these futuristic sci-fi walls as well. And then it has a lot of features you can tweak in order to uh, have different variations. You can age the walls and add moss to them. You can have staggered walls and walls that follow the terrain. So it looks pretty good in theory. But let's put it into practice today and see how easy and practical it is to use. Let's go to my Unreal Engine project. I've effectively imported that asset into my project and I've got this procedural walls folder. Uh, effectively, the only item you really need to use in here is in the blueprint section, this BP spline wall, which you can just drag into your level and then start to draw your walls and uh, change the parameters. They also provide in the demo folder this level demo which I've opened up here. And if I have a quick look around to see the sort of things you can do here, this is an example of staggered walls that stay level uh, with a bit of moss and aging on them. We've also got over here walls that aren't level and follow the terrain, so the tops are always uh, join together and then as we go around they've used custom meshes to create tunnels rather than walls this part of the level shows you the various materials you can apply so these are all provided in the asset so you've got brick walls uh, stone walls concrete and over here you've got these chain link fence effects that's what i'm going to actually use in my project so uh, we'll uh, see that later on and then over here, you've got the ability to put doors in walls as well. I won't be doing that today, but it looks like a useful feature. And then here's the more futuristic uh, sci-fi walls. In fact, let's go into play mode here and we can switch a torch on and we can go through into this maze. And they've done various different futuristic walls with metallic and glow effects and this one here has got a sort of a plasma effect as well so it looks as though there's a, a wealth of uh, options here so let's try it out in my project and see how straightforward it is in practice so I'll come out of this level and I will go into my level that I want to use it in. So I've got this um, I've got this project on the go at the moment. If I go into play, it's this sort of uh, spooky forest vibe, um, sort of for a lost in the woods, search and rescues type of game. So I've got my mist and my trees foliage, but this is a relatively large map. Um, you can run to the side to side in about a couple of minutes. But at the moment, I've got no way of stopping the pledge just falling off the edge. So what I want to do is create a perimeter fence that goes all the way around this map. And I thought this procedural spline walls asset looked as though it was just the right tool for the job. So let me come out of here. Let's switch off the fog so we can see a bit easier what we're doing. And let's just go to one corner. Let's go up a little bit. Yeah, and go to this corner of the map. So I want to drag the wall into this corner and then start to build it out uh, with the various options. So let me go back to the procedural walls blueprints demo and we'll drag that spline wall into this corner. You see it sort of snaps straight to that corner. 
the default seems to be this brick wall. Um, let's move around, have a look, it's come out a bit, see. So there are different options, I think, in how you create the walls here. You've got, it starts off with a wall section with two spline points. I could just elongate it, so I could drag this out, I could drag it across the whole section. But as you can see, my landscape has a little bit of uh, sculpting to it. So you'd end up with short bits of wall and long bits of wall. And, and in reality, you tend to build walls in sections. So that's what I'm going to try and achieve here. So let's go back to the sort of section of wall. And let me just try dragging out sections at a time. So the way you do that with splines is you select the spline that you want to extend and you hold the Alt key while pulling out the section. And you can see it creates effectively another instanced mesh between those two spline points. And I can carry on eyeballing that. Now at the moment, as I drag it out, it's still staying level, which if you remember, I said I didn't really want that. I wanted it to follow the contours of the landscape. So the first feature I want to show you is that in the settings for the spline wall, you've got this snap setting. And if I click on it, can you see there was that subtle shift in the spline point. So effectively the spline point now is snapping to the landscape underneath it. So it will follow the contours of the ground. And as I drag it out, it will snap. In fact, that's snapping to a tree that I've hidden as well. So just be careful, but it will make it very easy to um, drag it across the whole landscape and for it to follow the ups and downs of that. So that's a, that's a pretty useful feature, the snap feature there. If you find that you've got um, sort of sections where you can see, and maybe there's a good example, you might be able to see just underneath the wall um, because it's a, a, a sort of a steep uh, contour. You can uh, adjust that by using this wall Z offset or Z offset. By default, it sinks the wall about 10 units into the ground. But if you have got holes there, you could sink it a bit lower, say minus 30. And you see that would cover a multitude of sins if you had sort of light leakage and holes at the bottom of the walls. I don't need to do it in this example. So let's go back up to their default setting of minus 10. So this looks pretty good. Now I want to also have the wall going down the other axis as well. So let me just move around a bit here. And let's choose this spline point at the corner. And again, holding the Alt key down, I'm going to start dragging some sections up here as well. So it seems very straightforward to, to sort of set up the walls. And now let's go into play mode and see what uh, it looks like so far. So go into play mode. If I look around, there's my wall. And if I try and run off the end, it uh, won't let me. So there's collision there as well. So that's, uh, that's working nicely. So there's a couple of things I want to change about this. First of all, if I jump, I can jump over the wall and end up in the void. Don't really want to allow that. So I want to make it higher. And the second thing is I don't actually want a brick wall. Um, I want to have this chain link fence around the perimeter because I think it ties in more with that um, sort of spooky atmospheric view. So I'll come out here again and let's move back out. Uh, so with our spline wall selected, let's start to first, let's first of all change the height. So at the moment, you, you simply change the scale on the Z or Z axis. So at the moment, it's a scale of one. I want to make it three or four meters high. So let me just change this. Make sure you've got this unlock symbol, otherwise it'll scale it on all angles. And let's scale it by four. So we've got a nice tall wall. And let's start to change the settings for the material now as well. So remember I said I wanted a chain link effect. Effectively, you've got settings for the pillar. That's the ends of each section. And then settings for the wall itself. So let's start with the wall. And we, you can have a top if you want. I don't want a top for chain link, so I'll get rid of the top. And then under the wall look, you've got all these various different options. I'm going to choose chain link. Um, and that already looks pretty good there. I also want to make it a thin wall. 
so it's really so there's no thickness to it because um, chain link doesn't have thickness like bricks so that makes a lot of sense so that looks pretty good there um, is there anything else I want to do here well the parallax occlusion I don't need parallax occlusion is needed for uh, bricks and things like that where as you move around you want to see the depth of the bricks so I can save a bit of performance by removing that and I'll do that on the pillars as well in a section when I change those so I think that's um, all I want to do at the moment for the chain link but these brick pillars are not right for the chain link I want to have a round metal pole that joins them together so let's go up to the pillar settings and under my pillar look I will choose solid metal it's very thick and chunky at the moment so let's first of all make it round at the top and the base and it's way too thick so make the thickness of the top and the base 10 times smaller 0.1 and 0.1 and now we've got yeah a very effective looking chain fence which looks in the right sort of proportion. Now the only thing I want to do, or the last remaining thing I want to do is, it's way too new at the moment. You can see there, everything's shiny. The metal poles are shiny and the chain links shiny. And that might have been the case for the first week it was installed. But if it's been there for a while, there's gonna be rust and moss and things on there. So let's use some of the aging features to uh, give us the look we want. Let's go back to the wall and let's start off with these pillars. So you've got these age pillars and add moss pillars. I don't really want to add moss to it. I just want to have it uh, looks a bit sort of old and rusty. So you can change this age between zero and two. Um, if I go to two, it kind of goes very dark. Um, so all the shiny metals worn off. If I go in between one, that's kind of the look I'm looking for. It's um, got a little bit of the metallic look but obviously these stains uh, rust stains that make it look like it's been there for a while and we probably want to do the same thing on the actual um, chain link fence section so if you go to wall settings and we change the age to one as well you'll see that that has now dots of rust as well so this looks pretty good. Oh, the last thing I was said I was going to do as well is, again, it's a minor thing, but on the pillar settings, I'm going to uncheck parallax occlusion because, again, there's no bricks or anything that I'm moving around, so save a bit of performance, do that. Now, there's a lot of other options here um, uh, to do with sort of glow and saturation, which you can play around with. I'm not going to go into them in depth today. One other feature I'll just show you because I think it's it's important when you're building these walls. Uh, if I just move out slightly, come around to the corner, let's go up a bit. You have this uh, make tangents sharp and make tangents round. These are just really on off boxes. I want to create this sharp look at the end. So that's why the default is make tangents sharp. But if you wanted more of a round edge on your splines, if you click on round, can you see how it has effectively tried to smooth the edge of that corner? And if I click on make tangent sharp again, it goes back to uh, a right angle, which is what I want in this particular case. So, you know, again, very useful for if you're building more organic walls. Uh, let's uh, finish off by having a look at our finished product obviously I would have to go and drag this out for the whole wall but I'm not going to bore you and do that while you're watching so let's go into the project and it looks great it's in keeping with the feel of the level which is sort of fairly desaturated uh, yeah I can't run through them and as I get closer I can see that sort of aging look on the poles and the things so this is perfect for the game uh, not sure about performance, I'd have to look at that separately, but um, it doesn't seem to be causing any issues on this particular machine. So I hope you found this useful. I'll uh, review other free assets in the future and see how they actually work in practice. But uh, stay safe and I'll see you soon.